a defining aspect of the evolution of humanity is what specific materials they had at their disposal. An era system we've often exploited in the series is the concept of the stone, bronze, and iron ages, a concept based on the material that would be most commonly used by the civilizations at that time. But by that descriptor, what era are we in right now? In many ways, we're probably still in the iron age, but perhaps we're now in the aluminum age, the semiconductor age, or maybe the plastic age. But by material used by humanity today, concrete is the currently widest used material. Perhaps most accurately, we now live in the concrete age. Today we explore its ancient origins in Rome, <sighs> test out its strength compared to a variety of other building materials, discover how this new composite material became the backbone of some of Rome's greatest structural and engineering achievements. Everything we use comes from 8,000 generations of collective innovation and discovery. But could an average person figure it all out themselves and work their way from the Stone Age to today? That's the question we're exploring. Each week, I try to take the next step forward in human history. My name is Andy, and this is How to Make Everything. Today's video is sponsored by Bespoke Post. Bespoke Post is a monthly membership club that sends you curated boxes every month. You take a short quiz about what you like, and they pick a box based on your preferences. If you don't like what's in the box, you can return it for a different one at no extra cost. There are dozens of box options that change every month. Shipping is free, and each box costs only $45, but with a guaranteed retail value of at least $70 each box. Nice. And we got this guy, which is a bird call and a cyanide pill. <laughs> we got a cat here to get a reaction shot. Cedar and lavender incense. Curl up with some incense. I like it. It's pretty nice. These glasses are both elegant and functional. Considered the perfect pour. It's free to join, you can skip a month at any time. Click on the link below to get 20% off your first order of a spoke post. Just use the promo code EVERYTHING20. In the ancient world, many different building materials were used. Many that we've previously explored. From wood and stone, ceramics, cob, and plaster. In terms of building strong, lasting structures though, there's nothing really better than stone. The ancient Greeks became expert masons and hand-carved stones to amazing details for their structures. But such skilled and laborious work was expensive and limiting when you're trying to build a massive empire. So the Romans perfected a new material that allowed humanity to make its own stone in whatever shape they wanted, with the use of concrete. Before concrete, the next closest material was plaster, used as early as 7500 BCE. Plaster is made primarily with lime, which reacts with the air and cures into calcium carbonate, effectively turning into limestone. Where because the reaction requires direct contact with the air, plaster can only really be used in thin applications, such as a mortar between bricks or as a thin outer coating on walls. Eventually, it was discovered that the addition of a volcanic ash changed the properties of the plaster and resulted in a new material that was five times stronger than mortar. This new material was not dependent on the exposure to air, and could even set underwater. The cause of this is a different chemical reaction that occurs from the sacilic acid that's in the ash, the end result being calcium silicate hydrate. This new compound is called cement, and when mixed with an aggregate, which is just small pieces of stones or pieces of ceramics and bricks, it produces an even harder compound called concrete. This concrete allowed the Romans to build amazing structures from bridges, roads, aqueducts, monuments, temples, and even the Colosseum and Pantheon. The concrete proved to be so resound, many of them are still standing today some 2,000 years later. The modern form of cement, Portland cement, was invented around 1840 and replicates the similar properties of the volcanic ash of Roman concrete, but instead using fly ash made from coal. So to unlock this incredibly useful material in my future civilization building endeavors, I'm going to need to collect and produce a few ingredients. First up, the most important ingredient, volcanic ash. For that, while in Utah this fall, I returned once again to the Black Rock Desert Volcanic Field, where I collected obsidian several years ago. Both obsidian and pumice are formed from the same volcanic activity, where a liquid rock cools rapidly before it can crystallize. If this occurs under pressure, it forms volcanic glass or obsidian. I'm back at uh, the site where we got the obsidian. Before, I only had a Prius, so I wasn't able to make it quite as far up. So here I am. This appears to be the actual cliff side that all the obsidian came from. Uh, this is what it actually looks like. 
in his raw form. So let's take a closer look. So I had a few people comment that like you don't just find an obsidian in a big field like that, and that's because it was taken from this first. So this is what it looks like in the raw. You can see he's got just got a bunch of little crystals in here. I assume a lot of the more pure and large stuff got mined already. So this is a little less rich. So you have a lot of banding of other minerals in between it, which creates a pretty, pretty cool look. But for actual napping, it's not the greatest, which uh, promote it breaking at not where you really want it to break. You actually want to mine it from the earth, get a few chunks. Some chunks straight from the cliff. Hard to get big chunks off of this. They all kind of break apart. Just pick that guy right off. Lots of uh, flicking and layers in between it, so really not the greatest for napping. There's glass in my shoes now. Cool. If it's not under pressure, the rock will foam and froth as gases escape and cool into pumice stone. This is why you can actually turn obsidian into a foamy pumice by reheating it when it's not under pressure and make foam glass, which I just found out can help stop a bullet. The obsidian can stop these bullets. I guess obsidian is bulletproof. Historically, Romans used plentiful volcanic ash they had access to near the city of Pozzuoli and called the ash Pozzolana. It's the highly porous glass in this ash that makes it so effective in their concrete. So this pumice should yield the same result. There's cow poop everywhere here. So one of the important ingredients for making Roman cement was volcanic ash they were able to find in Italy as one of the active volcanic sites. So I'm back here in Utah. This is actually super close to where we originally got obsidian several years ago and used for a few different experiments. This is a deposit of pumice. So the same volcanic activity that produced that volcanic glass also produced this pumice, which is a form of volcanic Ash. It's very easy to tell what it is because it is super light, very uh, porous. So it makes the rocks super light. So this thing is only like barely a couple pounds. Ooh, makes me look a lot stronger than I actually am. Uh, so some of these might actually float if we put them in water. So we're gonna collect some of this. We can grind it up and see if we can add it to our mix to make cement. Now I'm gonna demonstrate my awesome strength and lift this giant boulder above my head. I mean, to my waist. <laughs> Overconfident. <laughs> I'm gonna lift this giant boulder. Ugh, I'm so strong. <laughs> Look at me. I'm so strong. All right, let's get some rocks. Have a few different varieties of sizes here. As long as it's light, it should be good. There is something kind of silvery in some of this. I wonder if there's potentially something else in here. It's also good for exfoliation. Maybe take a look, see if there's anything good deeper. Yeah, I don't see much better down below, so let's collect what's at the surface here. There's a little bit of obsidian. Interesting stuff. Ooh. Look at that big beetle. That big beetle. Besides that area in Utah, I've also collected a similar pumice material in California, which I previously used as an abrasive cleaner during our murder scene cleanup video. It looks pretty good. Let's see what it's like with just water. Uh, kind of comes out. The pumice I helped quite a bit. Pretty much good as new. The formation there is more brittle and doesn't form as solid rocks, so it is more accurately called pumicite, but it's composed of the same porous glassy material. Made it up to the old Dutch cleanser mine. All we had to do was climb this 500 foot cliff here. No, oh, don't, don't, show the car. It's a uh, mine of pumic stone. Uh, sometimes pumice? Pumice. Pumice. Something like that. I'm gonna go check out the mine, collect some uh, pumice. One wrong step and bottomless pit. There, this is the rock I wanted. Let's get out of here. Next, we need the lime, a useful compound I've made in past videos from glass to soap making. Starting from a source of calcium carbonate, such as limestone, it is first baked at high temperature for several hours, driving out carbon dioxide from the limestone and yielding quick lime or calcium oxide. Then by soaking in water, this produces calcium hydroxide or lime as a precipitate.
So this should be pretty much all the ingredients we need to make Roman concrete. We have the various volcanic ash I collected. We have the pumice from Utah and some of the pumicite from California. So we need to crush that up. Then we'll mix that with the lime that we made by baking limestone. And then we have some aggregate, which is basically just some rocks. And one of the secrets they discovered in the Roman era was to use as little water as possible. So we'll try to make this very thick and doughy, pack it into some of the brick molds, and we'll uh, make some test bricks so we can then compare to other building materials of the era and see just how much of an improvement this material actually was. Need a bigger boat. Roman concrete has now set and has gotten hard. One of the theories of why Roman concrete has kind of outlasted modern concrete and held up after many millennia is the uh, interaction with the volcanic ash in it. It actually dissolves when it gets exposed to salt water in place of the compound known as aluminum to bear. To bear. <laughs> aluminum toborumorite, something like that. Um, which is basically an even harder substance. It makes it an even more resilient compound basically as hard as rock. It's a process that took years and years to actually do the replacement, but we're gonna try and see if we can get some results. So we got some real salt from Utah, from an ancient sea that dried up. So we'll add that to the water and recreate our own sea. See if we get any improved results soaking in the salt water. It'll take some time for this chemical reaction to actually happen, so we'll have to revisit this brick later down the line to see if any noticeable changes to its strength can be detected. Our test bricks have now dried and solidified and should be done curing, and we should be ready to put them to the test. So for that, we have a hydraulic press here. It's going to put up to 12 tons of pressure onto it. We've got about 10 different samples we're gonna try out and see how well they each stand up against the pressure and see what is actually the strongest. So first up, we've got some wood, two two by fours to kind of replicate the same thickness. This one is probably gonna hold up pretty well. It's organic and it's got a lot of give to it. Ultimately, the disadvantage with wood is that it's both expensive to have to harvest and grow all of it. It's also not permanent, whereas concrete will theoretically last forever. Start to give. Oh yeah, we cracked. Next up we have cob, one of the oldest building materials in the world. It's a combination of clay, sand, and straw. Not expecting too much from this guy. Let's see how well it does. Call that. The guy's pretty well smushed. The car seemed to actually give it a fair amount of durability. It's still holding shape, but definitely smushed a bit. Next up we have the sun-dried bricks. These are just basically clay, a little bit of sand. Similar to the cob, just no grass. This guy I expect will probably just shatter pretty easily. 
or disintegrating. Yep, I think that's about it. Dust. Kind of disintegrated as soon as enough pressure was applied. It's pretty rigid. So then this one has been actually fired, which is about what they were doing around the Roman era. The firing of it should have vetrified, maybe a little bit stronger. Already breaking. Yeah, we're done. Pretty similar to the sun-dried one. Shattered pretty quickly. All right, so the other ones were just my own homemade bricks. This is a professionally made one. It's a little bit denser, I can already tell. It has been fired. Five. Ooh. Brick snapped. Ooh. Started to crack fairly early on, but overall it stood together and held most of its shape. My brick making has, has some room for improvement. So next up we have plaster. But one of the issues with plaster is that it only hardens and cures when exposed to oxygen, which means when you try to make bigger things like a brick, it's uh, not gonna cure on the inside. So I expect this to fail pretty easily and the inside might even still be wet. Not gonna expect too much from it. But yeah, we're uh, pretty quickly disintegrating here. The transition from plaster to concrete was pretty significant. We have basically what concrete is trying to replicate in that stone. It's just a block of limestone. Limestone is kind of flaky. Might not even be as strong as actual concrete, at least modern concrete. So this will be kind of comparable probably to our Roman concrete. Already mm. broke. So next up we have our actual Roman concrete. And this stuff is Definitely a bit firmer, probably heavier than most of the other ones. Maybe the modern brick is about as heavy. Um, the interesting thing is it's, it is lighter than modern concrete. They might have to do something with the volcanic ash, which is a little bit fluffier. And it might affect our, uh, our strength. Not really one detailed recipe for Roman concrete. So I tried a few different combinations. This is one of them and we'll see how well it does. Seems pretty solid, a little dusty, but it's definitely cured better than just the plaster did. Don't have the advantage of years of training to learn how exactly to perfect it. We have uh, modern concrete here. You can see how that compares to the ancient recipe we've been experimenting with. I suspect the result's gonna be a little bit better. definitely a bit more durable. So our Roman concrete wasn't quite comparable to a modern high-tech concrete, but it is still a very useful building material that we can start using for a lot of upcoming projects. We're going to be revisiting crushing olives. So we're going to build our own press the primitive way, and one of the key components of that will be our concrete, which we can start pouring now. And so we tweak our recipe a little bit, open up some new doors rather than having to carve stones, and save some manual labor. Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. I want to see us continuing in our advancement through civilization. Support us on Patreon. John. We really need your help. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.